Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 26th. It is a chilly day here in southeastern Pennsylvania, just above freezing but very high wind. It's February though, and uh, this is what February is supposed to be like, not like Thursday when it was 70 degrees. Uh, let me just check something. Okay, that's good. I'm having technical difficulties today. This is take three. Uh, I think we got it worked out though. And uh, take three will become important shortly. So what I have here is my Briar Spirit Janus pipe. Really beautiful pipe that I often smoke on Sundays, uh, but haven't had in quite a bit. Uh, haven't had out in quite a bit. And I have packed in this some haunted pirate ship. More on that. This is a gift from my friend Jimmy. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Much appreciated. It's a blend that I've certainly been curious about for a long time, um, but never wanted to go out and buy pirate cake, which is a lot of Kia laden nightmare in my opinion. I don't like a lot of Kia in case you don't know. Um, so the blend was, uh, I believe originated, but certainly popularized by our dear friend Matches860. And what it is, at least according to his explanation, was 50% Haunted Bookshop, 50% Pirate Cake, mixed together, jarred up, set aside for a month, two months, whatever, and, you know, given time for things to meld, and then it produced a blend that was highly acclaimed. Uh, Matches loved it, lots of people love it. Now, Pirate Cake has a very high lot of, lot of Kia content. I don't actually know what it is. It's ridiculously high. Um, so I avoided it because, well, first off, I wasn't going to buy pirate cake because I don't like a lot of Kia. And secondly, I like Haunted Bookshop a lot just the way it is. So I thought, why mess with it? Not that I haven't. You know, I, I, I have mixed things in with Haunted Bookshop, uh, and, and it was fun. You know, for a while we were making up names to go, like, Haunted Pirate Ship, so we, uh, I remember we mixed Rustica and Haunted Bookshop and called it Rusty Bookshop, you know, that sort of thing. So that was fun. Um, and there was a suggestion, although I don't think anyone ever did it, of mixing Haunted Bookshop and Captain Black Grape to make Haunted Vineyard. I don't think anyone ever did that. So what can I say about this? I mean, first off, the mouthfeel on this and, and the, 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 the volume of smoke and the creaminess of it is amazing. Um, it's a very satisfying thing to smoke. Uh, So I understand what, why the folks that enjoy Latakia would love this blend. The Latakia is sharp, more tangy, um, not the kind of Latakia I enjoy when I do enjoy it. I like the more mellow, sort of leathery kind of Latakia. This is very sharp, um, more to that barbecue sauce kind of end of things. And it is dominant. You know, this is clearly, and not surprisingly, a lot of Kia forward blend. Getting a little bit of gurgle here. This is the I, I, this is take three of the video, uh, technically. I mean, take one was pretty short, but um, and I had to reload between take two and three, so this pipe's overworked a bit. There we go. Pipe cleaner to the rescue. So 
Haunted Pirate Ship is mostly Latakia. Haunted, I'm uh, sorry, Pirate Ship is mostly Latakia. Haunted Bookshop, for those that don't know, is a is a Burley forward blend of Burley's Red Virginia and Perique. And it's my go-to blend. The problem with this for me is that I get no Haunted Bookshop out of this. None. I mean, I, I would... If, you didn't, if I didn't know better, I would swear it wasn't in there. I cannot detect any Burley, any Red Virginia. It's just Perique. Uh, I'm sorry, it's just Lot of Kia. Uh, there's no Perique. Um, even on Retro Hell. This is dying out on me for some reason. Yeah, even on the retro hell, I mean, I'm getting a little bit of burn, but I think that's from the Latakia. So that disappoints me greatly. You know, I, I, I love Haunted Bookshop, and to find none of it in here is very disappointing. But, if you like Latakia, I can understand why this would be an incredible blend for you. It's smooth. As, as a lot of cake can be. It's got voluminous smoke. it got a really good mouth. It does a very satisfying thing to smoke. But yeah, it's just not, not something I'm going to be looking forward to, having uh, a jar of. Now, Jimmy did very kindly send me a, a fairly substantial sample of this, and I've had, this is about my fifth bowl. Uh, been smoking it slow. He sent this back in maybe October, so I've been very slowly uh, trying it out, giving it time, um, and I think this is my final conclusion on it, but I will finish that. Um, just not going to have a bowl every day. Yeah, onto pirate ship. There you have it. So, My, I need a smaller tamper here. My wife has been watching Court TV or something like it. I, I don't know if it's still called Court TV. I, I don't care. Uh, I hate these things. You know, these things, like, you know, going all the way back to the O.J. Simpson trial, uh, there was the named Menden Menendez, guy who killed his, his parents, and then the whole O.J. Simpson thing, and I guess the, the Johnny Depp thing with his lady friend, whatever that was. I, I, you can't not hear about them, but I try really hard to not care about them, and I don't care about them. So I don't even have to try that. I try really hard not to hear too much about them, because I don't care about them. Um, you know, for a couple of reasons. I mean, one is I've got this weird thing where, you know, she's got, so the story that she's watching right now, the trial she's watching, is this guy, he embezzled a bunch of money, and then he apparently killed his wife and his child. Ah, terrible crimes, you know. He's already been convicted of the embezzlement charge, and now he's on trial for the murders. And she says, oh, he killed them. And, and the commentators say, well, he clearly killed them. And... Everybody is, you know, convinced that the guy is guilty, and I immediately take the other side. And if, if everybody said he was innocent, I would assume he was guilty. I just have this underdog mentality. It probably comes from being a Philadelphia sports fan for so long. So I immediately wind up being at odds with popular culture, which isn't a bad thing, but it just sometimes it's not a comfortable thing. Like when your wife says to you, how, how could you possibly uh, approve of somebody murdering their wife and child? <laughs> I don't, but the other thing I don't like about it is it's part of this culture of let's sit on the sofa, eat a bunch of junk food and die at an early age from heart disease while we watch somebody else live their life. That reality TV mentality, which I despise, I think that is a significant contributor to the downfall of our society 
and will continue to be so because it's clearly not going away. So she's watching this. And, you know, my wife will watch a lot of stuff I don't like. Uh, she she owns the remote control, of course, because, you know, she there's a long... I, I believe in, in Genesis, God actually told Adam that Eve owns the remote control. I'm pretty certain that's in there somewhere. So I don't get to watch what I want. And, and the truth is, I don't want to because I would watch a lot of stuff that she doesn't care about. You know, I like watching woodworking videos or fly tying videos. She doesn't want to watch those. I don't want to watch Hallmark movies or, or whatever sitcom she's, she's enjoying. But I can sit there and I can read a book. Or I can take out my tablet and, and put in some earphones and watch YouTube videos. It's fine. I get to be with her. And that's important to me. But when something like this comes on, I just can't bear it. You know, I just I don't want to be in the room when this is on. So I did something last night that I should have done a long time ago. And it was it actually was a very enjoyable evening. So we have uh, in our family room with the, the big TV, we have uh, something called Chromecast. And you probably know what this is, but it's a little thing that plugs into an HDMI port on the TV. And the early ones let you send a video, you know, like a YouTube video, to the TV just by clicking a little icon on the, on the screen. And there were other apps that you could do it with, um, but it, it was, it's fairly limited. And let me just show you, I've got some pictures just so you know what I'm talking about. So this is the, oh, sorry, that's not the original. That's the original uh, Chromecast, and that, that was the first one they came out with. That's the one I bought, and we've been using it for years, and I love it because I can just put a YouTube video up and watch it. But it's pretty limited. So this new one came out, and it was on sale towards the end of last year. And I thought, oh, what the heck, mine has been a little buggy. Um, so we'll get a new one and see what that's all about. And you can see it comes with a remote. This thing is really quite impressive in what it can do. So it not only lets you just send YouTube up, it has apps on it. So for example, it's got YouTube app, Netflix app, um, and you can install other things, uh, other streaming services. So the nice thing about this is you don't need your phone. You don't need anything. You just need this plugged into an HDMI port and that remote control. You can log into your YouTube account so you see all your subscriptions, you get your history and everything. Uh, it's really nice and there's other things like there's a an old movie app that you can install that uh, has a lot of really neat stuff on it and it, it it's it's fun I've really been enjoying this and I got this while she was spending five weeks in Pittsburgh and I got really used to using this and watching whatever I wanted and you know enjoying all sorts of things which I don't get to do now because she owns the remote control uh, and I let her. You know, it's, not, it's not like she would. If I said I want to watch something, she would hand me the remote control without question. Uh, she might go upstairs and watch it and watch what she wants to watch, but she would give me the remote control. But I don't want to do that to her. So anyway, the new one's been up there for a while. I had the old one sitting in a box. I brought it downstairs last night, plugged it into my uh, monitor here, which you can't see. I don't know how big that monitor is. It's probably 24 inch, something like that. And uh, using the old one and my phone as the remote, I was able to uh, watch YouTube. I can watch Netflix. I have uh, this old movie app installed on the phone that I can use. And I can send it to that monitor. And I can sit down here and have a pipe and a beer and watch a movie. And it was, it was nice. Uh, so last night I watched the 1932, I believe, version of Crime and Punishment starring... Um, Peter Lorre, wonderful movie, highly recommended. Uh, not a good adaptation of Crime and Punishment, mind you, which is a wonderful novel that I highly recommend, but a, a, a good movie. And uh, yeah, it was just nice. I, I just, I stayed down here, I got some stuff done while, while I was watching it, uh, fixed my magnifying lamp, which you may or may not be able to see up there. Um, it, anyway, I had to fix it. And uh, 
did a little bit of cleaning, cleaned off my desk and stuff, and, and just had a nice evening here, and then went upstairs in time for Svengoolie, so everything was perfect. <laughs> so I enjoyed it so much, I actually went ahead and ordered the new version to install down here. And uh, yeah, I've got my own little entertainment uh, set up here, so that's nice. It's just good to be able to relax with something you're comfortable with now and then and uh, and enjoy it. Now, I'm not going to be down here every night watching movies because that's not the kind of guy I am. I'd much rather be down here working on something. But it's nice to be able to have that diversion when necessary. So... I am going to finish up this second bowl of Haunted Pirate Ship, and I want you to understand what I did for you, because I messed up the first video. I actually went and made, loaded a second bowl of this. So I will finish this, and then I'll have a nice big Haunted Bookshop palate cleanser and get on with my Sunday. <laughs> I don't know exactly what that means. I got some work to do down here, and uh, we'll see what the missus has in store. My back is not. Ha I didn't talk about this. Uh, quickly, uh, last Sunday I told you about the work I did with my friend on the uh, the movie set. Sunday night, my back started to hurt, and by Monday I could barely walk. I threw my back out, bending over and doing that work on the floor. It was bad. Um, I had to go to work uh, most days last week, and just walking from my car to my office, which is just like a 10-minute walk, I didn't know if I was going to make it sometimes. My left leg was seizing up, the muscles were tightening, and like felt like I was trying to lift a heavy weight with my leg. Um, and, and even after I sat down, that took a while to ease up, so it must be a pinched nerve or something. Uh, anyway, I wound up taking Thursday... Uh, I worked from home on Thursday, kept the heating pad on it most of the day, popped a lot of Advil. Uh, by yesterday morning, I was feeling back to normal. It was great. I did some lathe work. I did, got some stuff tied up down here. and I was really happy that I was back to normal. And then we went to Costco. And we were in the checkout line at Costco yesterday afternoon. And you know that little thing that you put between the orders so that the guy in front of you doesn't wind up getting your giant Costco whatever uh, the clerk didn't slide it back because they don't so I reached over to get it and in, as I was reaching I just felt my back go and uh, I'm not back to where I was but I'm not happy right now so more heating pad time for me I guess anyway it'll get better it always does I've had this happen before uh, I have had x-rays within the past two years and you know I know there is some disc degeneration and all that but it's nothing nothing that rises to the level of surgery or anything I just need to do some physical therapy stretching exercises that kind of stuff which I do um, but right now I don't even want to walk anyway such is life when you get old uh, but as people have pointed out the alternative is not any better well with that friends I wish you a happy hopefully pain-free Sunday. Uh, Haunted Bookshop, if you like Latakia, definitely Haunted Bookshop. Haunted Pirate Ship, I probably screwed that up through this whole video. If you like ha Latakia, get yourself some Haunted Pirate Ship. If you got some Haunted Bookshop, you don't like it, and you like Latakia, get yourself some Pirate Kit, make it, you'll be happy. If you don't like Latakia, get out your 10-foot pole and push it away. <laughs> But I'm really glad I got the chance to try it. Thank you again, Jimmy. Uh, wonderful uh, gift. And Jimmy Jimmy sent me some other tobacco, and I really appreciate him. He's a great guy. Uh, so with that, folks, I'm going to sign off. I hope you all have a great Sunday. Fantastic week ahead. We'll be back uh, next week. Next Friday, we've got a live stream at 8 p.m. Eastern, so join us. And finally, hit the thumbs up button. It helps get the word out, and uh, the more the merrier. So with that, guys, take care, and until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.